Hi everyone, good morning. You welcome back to GMINDS Academy online classes. I am Mrs. Amako. Our topic today is on stitches. But I just want to remind us of this pattern cutting textbook. Because everything you need is in this textbook. You have every detailed teaching in this textbook. In case you don't have one, you can contact the school. You can come to the school and pick it, or it will be delivered to you at your doorstep. Like I said, our topic today is on stitches. Now, what is stitches? In a general term, stitches are fundamental elements in sewing, knitting, lace making, etc. Then we have two kinds of uh, stitches. We have hand stitches and machine stitches. Now, hand stitches are a loop of thread resulting from a single part or movement of a needle in sewing, knitting, or crocheting. Machine stitches are the art of choosing and setting your desired stitches on computerized machine in, to achieve your goal. Then, having know, known what hand stitches and machine stitches are, we are concentrating on hand stitches. I've taken time to list about 10 different kinds of stitches. But we're going to talk about the five basic stitches. That is why I advise everyone to go to the pattern textbook, where you will get the whole lot of the definition and the uses of all stitches. Now, the first one there is felling stitches, blind stitches, cross stitches, running stitches, back stitches, top stitches, basting stitches, catch stitches, overcast stitch or stitches, whip stitch or stitches respectively. Now we are talking about the felling stitches. What is felling stitch or what are felling stitches? Felling stitch is just to join a fabric layer to another without visible stitches. You will not see the stitches are not visible. And this kind of stitches can be used to secure your band, the waistband, the inside waistband. You can use it to secure it. You can also use the felling stitch or lining when sewing a jacket. It looks very beautiful when neatly made. So this kind of stitches, felling stitches, you can also call it an applique stitch because many people use it to make an applique. An applique is just a little decoration. If you look at it, it looks very beautiful. It's to beautify your fabric or an object. Now, the second one there is blind stitches. As the name indicates, blind. This kind of stitch is hide stitches under the folded edge. And you can use it to do a blind, to make a blind stitch. You can use the blind stitch on hem, like your dress, if you want to hem your dress, if you want to hem your top, if you want to hem your um, palazzo or anything you want to hem. If you use it very well, nobody will even know that you, there is a stitch in there. After hemming, you iron it very well, and it will be very, it looks very beautiful, and it comes out well. Now, your cross stitches. What is cross stitches? Cross is just like X. So it has an X shape. It is used to create an applique to or design. It is used for embellishment. When I get to the practical aspect, I will show you the different kinds of embellishment with this S shape. It is used to embellish a fabric or 
your outfit. There are people you will see, especially on their t-shirts. They make an embellishment with this egg shape, an applique, a right on their chest. Some of them can make it on, on their uh, arm or their shoulder. So it all depends where you want it to be seen and it comes out very beautiful. Then we are going to running stitches. Running stitches is just passing the needle in and out on fabric or a regular distance. And these distances, they are not constant. They can have a short distance, they can have a long distance. And in running stitch, the use of running stitch is to make your, to have your gathers. If you want to make any gather, anywhere you want to, uh, you want it to show, or either you want it the, um, the chest gathers, or you want it at your waist gathers, so long as you want to make gather, running stitch is the best for making gathers. Like in the uh, machine, we have a place, an indicator there, that shows us an adjuster. It is a length stitch adjuster. That's the, the, if you want to get your running stitch, you use the long stitch adjuster. Then we have the back stitches. The back stitches, simply put this way, is the movement of the stitch to take the needle forward and bring it backward, leaving no space to the end of the previous stitch. What I mean is when you are making a back stitch, you will not see any space in between, unlike other stitches. So back stitch is just the normal sewing on machine. That is what back stitch is. In the olden days, uh, the people were using back stitch to make dresses. If you don't look at it very, if you look at it very closely or very far, you will not even know that it is made with hand. But in the modern days of technology, we have this machine. So that is why you find it that many people don't really do back stitches again. Why? Because it is not easy to come by. Okay, having known what hand stitches and machine stitches are, and the five basic stitches, the five basic hand stitches and their uses, I would want to introduce us to the practical aspect. Stay tuned. You are welcome back to the practical aspects of the hand stitches. Now, let's get started. Okay, the first stitch on the board there is felling stitch. We are going to work on felling stitch. First of all, this is a calico. You're going to cut 10 by 10. You're going to cut 10 by 10, iron it very neatly. Then you fold by the side, you fold one inch twice. This is the first one inch, this is the second one inch. Then at your right hand side, you do the same. Haven't gotten that. You take your tape, measure it this way. Already, this is 10 inches, as you can see. So what we do is, you'll be marking or ticking 0 0.5 on each, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, till you get to the ten, the last uh, inches. After getting it, look at what I did here so that you will not make a mistake. I did this underneath. I did this underneath. Look at it. This is underneath. 0 0.5. Then you come up with 0 0.25 here, inches. You come up 0 0.25 inches. On that particular line, don't deviate just 0 0.25 up here, then when you come here, what you're having here is 0 0.5. Just take 0 0.25 up, that is all. So we want to start.
I'm working on failing stitches or failing stitch. The first thing you do is to insert your needle in the folded part. Look at it closely. Insert your needle in the folded part at the tip of your 0 0.5 you insert your needle then bring it out allow it to go in but you will be careful because i have, I have not knotted it i'm going to knot it here so what you're going to do you carefully underneath you pick because i said that the stitches are not visible so you pick carefully here underneath then you bring it back when you bring it back this is what you're going to do to knot it sorry okay you now insert it into this loop Sorry. So you pick here, like I said, you take it in. You be very careful, don't use a very long thread so that you will not struggle with it. That's it. So this is how you begin in sewing your felling stitches. You get the folded area, then you pick underneath, just a little strand, having in mind that your stitches will not be seen behind. So this is it. So this loop here. You insert your needle to lock. You have secured the stitches or the stitch rather. Then next, you go down at that point you have tipped, pick a little when you are sewing, please don't make your thread lengthy because if it is lengthy it will be difficult for you to sew then after picking down you go up you will see it there that is 0 0.25 you tick up you bring it so we are forming the Felling stitch. So, what you do now is go into the second 0 0.5 down, you pick it up. Zero point two five up, insert your needle at that zero point two five up. And that is it. You go underneath again. That's 0 0.5. You pick a little. Just make sure you pick, even if it's a strand, it's better. Then you go up again. Where you take your 0 0.5. You have secured it. You move to the next one. For 0 0.5, you pick a little, just a little strand. Then you go up again, where you take your 0 0.25. So I will take it one more time, so that we go to the next stage. Do the same. 
destroyed. Then your zero point five, zero point two five, sorry, oh. So this is how you achieve your failing stitches. The next is blind stage. Unlike the failing stage, we have the space of 0 0.5, but the blind stage, we are leaving one inch as the spacing. This is 10 inches. The 10 inches, then nine, you put a dot underneath. Underneath, that's where you put the dot. There's no dot up, just the underneath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's it. Let's get started. Now for this, this is how you will achieve the blind stitch. Anytime you are sewing, when it's folded, always start at the folding. Put insert the needle. Insert the needle at the folding area, folded area, at the tip. This way. Then you pick a little to secure it. And that loop will not. You have to be very careful so that the thread will not turn off. Because it is blind stitch, we are going to insert the needle at the folded edge to come out at the next inch. Look at what I'm doing. Make sure it's aligned with that one inch underneath. This is it. See the dot here? That's where I'm coming uh, from. The exact spot. Then what you're going to do to lock, you pick a little at that dot. You lock. Then next, from that point, the point you have knotted, you insert your needle in, you get to the next inch. This is the next inch, and this is the dot here. So that's the next inch. It's hiding, it's a blind stitch. So, it will be difficult for you to know that you are making any stitch there. So, for you to knot or to lock, you pick a little from the dot under, just as strong. You lock. Then, next. This is the last one I'm going to make. Then you can make your own. You try it on your own and see how beautiful it will look like. You still get down from the knotted area. You go to the inside, the insert your needle on the folded part. You just have to be careful and make sure it is coming out from the next inch, the space you have given. This is exactly where the dot is, that's, that's where it's coming from, coming out from rather. So this is it, then you lock. So I advise everyone to try it at home and see how beautiful it will come.
So this is for blind stitch. The next is cross stitch. Just like the blind stitch, the space we're going to leave between, in between is one inch. You're not going to, this time, you're going to tick on top. Look at what I did here. On top, look at, if you are measuring it, one inch. Connect. This is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then you, you, you're going to tick on top, not underneath. Then you come up to to take the same 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, four, uh, two 1. The reason is this is a guideline. The one on top is a guideline because we are forming an X. So this is a guideline. So you, you need to have it and make sure that it stands with the one down. So let's get started. Like I said, anytime you are sewing, you always start from the folded area, not at the tip, the down folded area. That is where you will start and lock before you proceed. So this is it. Then you pick a little down because this is the starting point that's why we are going a little underneath to pick that is it then next we are going up there at that tip that is why I said this is a guideline this is a guideline where the S will cross so you go right up here. You are going right. You insert your needle here. That folded area up at the tip. Your thread is going to hide. Then you come out at the tip here. Look at it very closely. You place a mark. I tip. That's it. Then you come up. So the next thing you will do, you can see it here. This is the next one you are picking. We are going down, up, down, up, down to have that X shape. Look at it like it's forming the X. So you go all the way down. to pick just a little bit you just have to be very careful don't pull, don't drag then after that you get to the next up at that tip then you go back this way your thread will be hidden be in the folded part. You be careful. And you come out at this point to meet with the first point. You come out at that point. We are forming X, like I told you, is cross. So you go down because it's all about going up and down. If you go up, you are coming, you are going left. There's no, if you go up, you are coming left. Don't go right because if you go right, you won't get that cross. But when you are coming down, you go right. When you are going up, you go left. When you are coming down, you go right. So this is how it is. We are going down now, so this is our right. Go down and pick.
where you are taking it, be careful. So that is the cross. I want to take it one more time. We are going up again. When we go up, we are going our left hand side. And the stitches will not be seen, to be hidden in the further part. And you come up again to meet the second line. Then you go down to P. So I advise you to try it on your own. It is very interesting. It looks so beautiful. This is it. Then, like I told you, that the X shape, which is the cross stitch, you can use it for an applique or for embellishment. I want to show you something. This is what I mean. See how beautiful this is. See how beautiful it is. This is what we call boggle bead. We use boggle bead here. This is spell and this is boggle bead. You see the applique, you see the embellishment. We have embellished it so beautifully well. So you can use any kind of bead, you can use your pearl to form this X to make an applique or to embellish it. See how beautiful it is. So on your own, you can still try it. You can try it on your uh, dresses, you can try it on your top, you can try it on any object. This. The next is running stitch. And running stitch is the simplest of them all. Running stitch is necessary because you can use it to secure your uh, fabric or secure your uh, outfit or secure anything you are sewing. Especially when you are sewing very difficult uh, fabric or sewing very difficult outfits. You use the running stitch to secure. Then after sewing, it is very easy to lose it out. Now, this is the simplest one, like I said. You just have Take a ruler, measure one inch, rule it about two or three. It doesn't really mean. So when you are starting, and you make sure that this is the uh, calico, this is five inches, five by ten. Five inches here, then ten. So you need to have two. Your ten by ten, cut it into two, you have your five inches. Then you put it together. So this is how we start. Let's get started. On that line, at the tip on the line, that's where you start sewing. So you need to lock. This is how you lock. At the tip. Look it at the tip. Be very careful too. You have already secured it. Now, running stitch, as I said, is the in and out. You're passing your needle and thread in and out, and it will be coming out. You will see it, and you see how it's going to be very easy. Everybody can do this. Even your child at home can do it. So this is it. It depends on the length you want. Don't make it too lengthy, because if you make it too lengthy, it's no longer running stitch. You are going to another stitch which is faster. So we are doing running stitch. This is it. You come out here, you put your needle in again, it comes out, take your needle in, it comes out again, take your needle in and out. Then you can now pull. But when you are pulling, still be careful. Be careful so that your thread won't be tangled. That is why you're not going to put a long, don't thread your needle. Don't put the thread long, don't make a long thread. So, 
this is how it is then. We start from here again. In, out, in and out, in and out, in and out. If you have enough, then you can pull. When you are pulling, you be careful. So that your thread won't be tangled. So we go again. I'm going to finish this up because I want to show you something that is used for gathers. So that's what I want to show you. So the same thing applies here. In and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Then if you have enough to pull, you cannot pull. Then you go again. You're almost there. In and out. In, out, in, out. I want to take it to the end so that I'm going to show you what I mean by by the running stitch using a by usage rather when you want to get your gathers. So this is running stitch. So if you want to use it as gathers, what you're going to do is you go back here and begin to pull. As you are pulling, you are getting your gathers. As you are pulling, you are getting your gathers. You come back here again to pull. As a matter of fact, a hand stitches, in terms of running stitches, is very, very simple and easy to make your gather stitch. So this is it. That's the gathers. So the last stitch we are practicing today is a back stitch. Just like a the running stitch, you cut 10 by 10, slash it into two, then put it together, go like one or two lines, but in space of one inch. Then you start at the tip. This is it, then you need to lock. Anytime you are you sewing any hand stitch, you need to lock to secure it. So that so since I said it goes forward and come backward again, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So the first one, since we have locked, can go in like this. That's it. So I'm going backward now. I've gone forward. I'm coming backward. To go backward. Then you're coming forward. Leaving no space. That is why I'm going backward. I'm leaving no space. This is it. You go backward here, don't leave any space. Then you move forward again. The stitches are not meant to be long because it's back stitch. It's a stitch you will use to make a whole lot of outfits without knowing that you, you use hand stitches. It looks more of a machine stitches. So this is it. So in case if you don't have machine at home, this is exactly the stitch you are going to use.
to make any of the outfits. So long we are very patient. No one will know that this is what you use. Everybody will think you use the machine. So long as you are very patient and you are doing it the way it should be, you go backward again, then you come forward, leaving no space. So this is the best teaching so far. Because others, if you want to take them out, it's very easy. But without seam ripper or scissors or blade, you cannot take this out. That is why I told you, in the old days, this is the stitches every seamstress was using to achieve their desired outfit. It's a very good one. But you need patience for you to use this stitch. But as you're using it, it's not difficult, it's interesting. If you don't have machine at home, like I said before, I advise you, any outfit that you are giving in these online classes to me, kindly use this kind of stitch, back stitch. So, I go back again, I'm coming forward. So you continue this way, see, you get to the end. My advice to everyone is try this stitch, back stitch, maybe in end of the miniature. Just try it on your own since we are still at home for now. You will love it. So you continue this way till you get to the desired length. So this is the end of the five basic stitches that I have already taught today. This is the practical aspect. I want every one of you to try the stitches. They are so beautiful. Like the one I showed you, the X shape, that I show you the applique that is there and the embellishment. I would want you to use whatever you have at home, try it out. You can ask some questions and I'm available to answer you. God bless you.